I'm Dr. Craig Goodmurphy, and this time we're going to review the thoracic wall and the pleura and lungs. So in your dissection of the thoracic wall, pleura, and lungs, you should have reflected the skin on both sides. And it's also a good opportunity for you to check some of the osteology out again, making sure you look at the rib cage, how it's bounded, and uh, some of the major components of each rib with its various details and the ribs themselves, the false, the true, and the floating. Now, if we reflect the pectoralis major out of the way and the pectoralis minor, which is going to be deep to that, we then did our butterfly cut. But before we remove those, we'll zoom in on one side of the thoracic cage and we'll look at the intercostal muscles. Here, as we're zooming in, we can see the thoracic cage with the rib running here. And we'll come back out a little bit more. Another rib right in here. So we have the intercostal space in between. And we can see that there are some muscle fibers. If we go a little bit lateral, you can see fibers that are running from the superior rib down and in. Those are going to be the external intercostals. Then it becomes membranous so that if you come to the medial aspect, you can now see fibers that are running from the sternum right here. Here's the rib. It's running from the superior aspect down and out. Those are going to be internal intercostal muscle fibers. They're seen through the membrane of the external intercostal fibers. So don't get confused by that. Now, if we take this and turn it over, and we'll see on the inside surface, deep to the parietal pleura that's covering the thoracic cage, towards the mid-axillary line is the best spot for you to see the third intercostal muscles, which is going to be the innermost intercostals. And here you can see those fibers running directly from rib to rib. And it's the angle of the ribs themselves that gives this an attack angle. So for the three muscle layers, you have the external intercostals that run down and in towards the front of the pockets. The internal intercostals, which were down and out towards the internal or back pockets. And then the uh, in innermost intercostals, which run transversely across from rib to rib. If we go more medial, like we've got here, we can now see the sternum. And on either side, we see a neurovascular bundle. The vessels in this area are going to be the internal, inner th internal thoracic artery and vein. Mr. Big Hands here has the vein in his hand now, and we'll get the artery as we're coming in. And there they are. Now, the artery is going to be an important branch that's going to be used in bypass surgeries. And here you can see some of the branches coming off of those, like these anterior intercostal branches. One of the more important branches that we can't see here is the pericardiacophrenic, which runs with the phrenic nerve that we'll see once we get the thoracic cage out of the way. If you look down here, you can see some fibers of a specialized internal um, muscle fiber called the thoracis transversus or transverse thoracic musculature and they leapfrog over top of these internal thoracic vessels sometimes clinically called the internal mammary vessels as you project downwards these will come onto the abdominal wall and then they'll come onto the diaphragm itself we'll discuss those a little bit later when we remove the thoracic cage we can see now the lung fields and the mediastinal region of the thorax. So we have two lung fields, one on either side, with the mediastinum in between. Off here, you can see the apex of the heart. Here is our um, left lung. And then over on this side, we can see our right lung. Now we have some diaphragm down inferiorly here. And we have the abdominal wall coming into view just at the bottom. Now, what you can see in this point is if we pull one of the lung fields on the left side to the side, and we can see the phrenic nerve, if we zoom in a little bit more, remember the phrenic nerve runs in the pericardial sac, and it goes over the hilum of the lung, which will be down into this area here. There's that phrenic nerve. Three, four, and five from the cervical region keep the diaphragm alive. In this view, we've taken out the left lung and we're looking into the left hemithorax. You can see the abdominal wall here. We have the chin and neck up here with the manubrium at this point. And here is the lung field. 
Down here is the diaphragm on the left hemidiaphragm. And we can see the pericardium of the left side of the heart with the aorta arching up and over, disappearing as the descending thoracic aorta. What we want to see on this view is if we zoom in a little bit, I'm going to step over to the other side, and we'll be able to follow the phrenic nerve. That's going to be C3, 4, and 5, which are going to keep the diaphragm alive along the pericardium all the way down and right into the left hemidiaphragm. And notice how it's in front of this area right here, which is the hilum of the lung. The aorta is going to arch over top, and we're going to see an important nerve right up in this area, the vagus nerve, which is cranial nerve 10. We'll go in a little bit more, and now we'll be able to see that vagus nerve coming around, giving some branches off posteriorly onto the aorta, and then down onto the esophagus, with some branches coming into the pericardial region, and then here, we can see a very unique branch called the recurrent laryngeal branch of the vagus that wraps around and goes up into the tracheoesophageal groove to get back to the larynx up in the neck. We'll run into that several times during our dissections. Uh, and what we're going to see right now is this recurrent on the left going around. On the right side, it would go around the subclavian. So here we have our two nerves, vagus and phrenic hilum of the lung. In the next shot, we're going to look at the lungs themselves. In this view of the right lung, you can see that the anterior edge is a sharp margin on the lung. The shiny surface around the lung itself is going to be the pleura, and this is going to be the visceral pleura, tight against the organ itself. And then we can see the various surfaces of the lung. We're going to rotate this around to show the costal surface, which is the largest of the surfaces because it comes all the way around. You can even see on this cadaver that there's some impressions from the rib. These don't show up on an unfixed cadaver. They only show up on a fixed cadaver. So they're not that important, but they can help you tell the costal surface. Posteriorly, you can see how it's a rounded surface. And as we move into the medial surface, this is going to be the hilar structures and then the mediastinum. We're going to come around to the lateral sides again, and we're going to show the various um, fissures. There we go. We get a nice view now of the oblique fissure, which comes across and separates the basal lobe from the superior and middle lobe. Now I'm going to get Mr. Big Hands to let go of the middle lobe so we can see the transverse fissure right here. There we can see the opening of the transverse fissure. Not every lung will have a transverse fissure, or it may be incomplete. So using fissures alone is not a good indicator to be sure which lung is which. Now we're going to look up at the apex over here. And we can now see in this view the lung is very bullet shaped. Now we'll flip it and we'll look at the, medias, uh, the mediastinal surface which is then going to have the hilar structures. OK, and can we orient the apex up? There we go. Now, here in the hilar structures, we have a little bit of bleed over from the injection process. But if we zoom in on these hilar structures right here, keep going in. Come across to this side. OK, and we'll focus that by panning down a little bit. That would be the other way. There we go. Once we zoom in on the hilar structures here, we see bleed over from the injection process. But this entire structure right here is the bronchial tree. And you can even see some of the cartilaginous rings coming across that. Then. You'll be able to see in front, anteriorly, since this is the right lung, we'll have the artery. And if we were to uh, be able to show without the bleed over, these are all um, blue because they're deoxygenated. Then we can see here, coming back into the heart would be some of these lower, inferiorly oriented pulmonary veins, which are going to be oxygenated, returning to the left side of the heart. Now we're going to move to the left lung. Now we have a left lung, and we can see again we have the anterior margin, fairly sharp. 
coming up towards the apex, diaphragmatic surface on the bottom. And you can even see a little bit of the lingular process coming off of the superior lobe. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it around to look at the costal surface. Again, we're coming around. All of this is costal surface. Again, you can see impressions of the ribs. Posteriorly here, you can now see that it's a nice big wide border to it. And then when we start to move in medially, uh, you can see the impressions. Now stop here for a second. On the left lung, in a fixed cadaver, you can see an aortic impression, which is typically quite clear. There is the opportunity to see on the right side some superior vena cava impressions medially, and uh, I, inferior vena cava sometimes. But again, these are all artifacts of fixation, and they won't show up on an unfixed lung. Now we'll zoom in and look at the overhead position. We're back up at the apex. You can start to see how the apex is right here, but the oblique fissure on the both lungs starts more inferior and posterior to that and runs all the way down this lateral aspect here. And what we'll do now is we'll rotate it around and go to our other view. Yep, keep rotating around. And from this angle, we can see our oblique fissure separating the posterior basal or lobe and the more anterior superior, uh, superior lobe. Then the oblique fissure will come around. Notice how the lingula is on the superior lobe. And we'll have the cardiac notch if we can rotate to the front side again. Cardiac notch is the impression that's left right in here from where the heart would sit. Now we'll look at our hilar structures from above. and rotate that around so it's up, up top. Great. Now, as we're coming into this hilar structures, we've got our apex here. Keep rotating it around so it's direct anterior. There we go. Good. Now, in this view, we can see the pulmonary arteries are superior to the bronchial tree. So the primary bronchi right here, and in cross-section, you can even see small pieces of cartilage that you can definitely palpate when you're doing your dissection. Again, we'll see multiple uh, arteries depending on where you've cut the, uh, the structures, but the main pulmonary trunk should be above the bronchus in the left lung. And then down in below, you'll see multiple veins as well. That's the best way to tell a left lung from a right lung by their hilar structures. Well, that should be the basic review of the thorax, lungs, and pleura. The next time, we'll move on to the middle mediastinal regions and talk a little bit about those structures. I'm the anatomy guy. We'll see you next time.